The Merry Beggars presents... All aboard! On the Night Train. Episode 9, Mary Diamond. Come on, Edith, Paul, hurry on to the train. We need to get into the kitchen car. I can't leave you behind in Omaha now. This stop was not nearly long enough. I haven't had time to visit a single museum. That really was Mama, wasn't it? That was her boarding the lounge car, right? Of course it was her. I told you I saw her. But why was she wearing that dress and glasses? Mama doesn't wear glasses. I don't know, but that was your mother, all right. There must be a reason. Come on now, hurry. Time's aboard the night train, calling all Pullman passengers. We are now boarding the night train. We are California bound. All aboard! But Harold, what about the tickets you bought us for the train to Chicago? Forget them. I can't send you two back home to Chicago with your mother and your father both on the night train now. <laughs> back in the saddle again. That's right, Harold. We can't go back now. Mama's here now. But. What is Mama doing here? Why would she come to Omaha looking like a different person? I don't know. Your mother is a wise woman. I can only guess she must have her reasons. Uh, slow down, so slow down now. We have a few moments to spare, and I don't want to attract attention. In spite of your mother being on the train, and until we figure this out, you're still stowaways, remember? No one can know you're related to your father or he'll lose his job. If Pullman had any idea... I remember. But what about Mama? Can we go and say hi to Mama? I don't think so, Edith. She's already on the train. If you run up to her now, you'll make a scene and the other passengers will certainly find out that you're Will Mallard's children. Mom isn't supposed to be on the train at all. Mr. Pullman banned her too. I bet you that's why she's wearing glasses. Have you ever seen her wear glasses before? No, she doesn't. And how did she get here so fast? Quiet. Paul, Edith, you can hear your mother inside the lounge car right above us. Listen. Good afternoon, ma'am. Come right over here. We're so glad that you could join the night train and on such short notice. Thank you, sir. Here is my ticket. What wonderful mail. Welcome aboard. Mrs. Is... My name is Miss Mary Diamond. Mary? Her name isn't Mary. Her name is Louise. Diamond is her old name before she became a Mallard. Why is she giving a fake name? And why is she talking so funny? I don't know. I don't know why she's here or what's going on. Getting to California is hard enough without all this mystery. Come on now, just come with me. Harold, do you mean we have to hide from Mama too? Yes, until we figure this out. Here, go on into the kitchen car now. Both of you, quick. Your dad's coming down the platform this way. We've got to keep you two out of sight for now. What a mess we're in. Up you go, Edith. Now you. Rosie! Oh, Rosie, you won't believe what just happened. Edith? Paul? What are you two doing on the night train again? You're supposed to be headed back home to your mother in Chicago. Harold said he bought you two tickets. Mama is here on the night train. How on earth did Louise Mallard get here? Harold, what is going on? All aboard, last call for the night train. I don't know, Rosie, but Edith and Paul are staying on the night train. I need to go prepare for departure. Please keep them out of sight of everyone. I'll explain later. You'll explain now, if you don't mind? They're telling the truth. Louise and Will are on this train and no one is back in Chicago for them. Here, Paul, you might as well take the watch back. Thanks, Harold. Well, if you're on the night train to stay, you might as well make yourselves useful. Paul, close the kitchen door. Edith, pick up that box of oranges. We need to get these groceries stowed before we start moving and eggs and milk spill everywhere. Where did this box go? That's rice. Stow it far away from the sink, wherever it fits best. Oh, if the grocer had sent us everything we'd ordered, I would have had all these put away already. But your father had to go into town and give him a talking to. We heard Dad talking to the grocer when we were spying on the floofy lady. Paul! Spying on the floofy? Never mind. Please don't explain. He means Kate Rosie, Smith. we saw the floofy lady, Kate Smith, ordering lamb in the grocery. Isn't my cooking good enough? I don't think it's about your cooking, Rosie. Your cooking is wonderful. Remember the telegram we found? If through the snow cut struts and sways for a lamb's tongue. Right. 
And Professor Doby Dad sent a pretty suspicious telegram when we were in Omaha, too, about a uh, plot and patience. Doby Dad or Kate Smith could be trying to sabotage the night train. Sabotage or not, we'll be off in a second. Hold on, you two. Whew, just in time. All the groceries put away. Thanks for your help on that. There we go, right on time, 11 o'clock. Wow, we're going so fast already. Look, Paul, the grocer and the Pullman Club look like dollhouses. Yep, bye, Omaha, bye, Pullman Club, bye, Tipsy Cow. Rosie, how many more days until we get to Sacramento? Should be three days or so. Are you staying until Sacramento now? I don't know. I hope so. We have to wait and see why Mama is here. And how in the world did Louise Mallard suddenly appear on the night train? I don't know, but it is Mama even though she said her name was Mary Diamond. Which is her old name, before she married Dad. Instead of Mrs. Louise Mallard, her full name is Mary Louise Elizabeth Diamond Mallard. But nobody calls her Mary, and she's a Mallard now, not a Diamond. I don't know why she's here. I think she saw us on the platform. Why didn't she just come over to us? We could have been in Omaha together right now and heading home tomorrow. But instead, we're all on the night train and disobeying Mr. Pullman's orders. I don't understand it. But Mama must have a plan. She must be hiding, like we are. Mama has a good reason for everything she does. Mama's smart, because we aren't actually Stoutwards, but all the passengers on the train call us Edith and Paul Stoutward because we're stowaways. Edith, honey, calm down, deep breath. Do we have to hide from Mama, Rosie? I don't know, sweetheart. Come here, let me give you a hug. There now, deep breaths. Your heart is beating fast and frantic as a baby bird. That could be Daddy! Or Rudy! Or somebody who knows we're mallards! Hide under the sink like you did before. Hello? Kids. It's just me. Lord, you gave us a fright. Kids, you can come out from underneath that sink now. It's not the best place to be hiding anyhow. Harold, could you finally please explain to me what is going on? Why is Louise Mallet on the night train? And how did she get to Omaha? Well, my guess is that she convinced the mail train in Chicago to let her on board. Rode that all the way here. How could she get here before the night train? Well, there are three different railroad lines that go from Chicago to Omaha. She could have gotten on a train, headed this way soon after we left. The accidents in Iowa and Nebraska delayed us. You mean sabotage. The sabotage delayed us and gave her a chance to catch up with the night train, buy a ticket, and get on board. But the night train was sold out. Where's she sleeping? Well, a room happened to open up when we arrived in Omaha. Mrs. Heinz decided to leave the night train after the bridge incident. She would prefer to go home to Chicago than to risk the dangers of the railroad. She's spending the night at the Tipsy Cow. Tipsy Cow? It's a tavern in Omaha. It's my favorite tavern. How many taverns do you know, Paul? So, Mrs. Mallet took Mrs. Hines' room? Yes. Rosie, Harold, do you think we have to hide from Mama? And where is Louise Mallet now? I saw Philip helping her onto the dining car. But Rosie, Mama's on the night train and she's not supposed to be. What do we do? Can we talk to her? What's the plan now? Your mother is using a false name, right? Yes. Then she must not want people to know who she is, right? I guess so. And Pullman banned all of you except your father from boarding the train, is that correct? Yes. Then I think you stay hidden for now. If two children start running up to Mrs. Mallard or Mr. Mallard, passengers will start putting two and two together and reason that you must be their children. And once gossip gets going, you better believe that Pullman will catch wind of it. But Pullman didn't even have a reason to kick us off the train. Reason or not, Pullman did. If he hears that any of you, any of you, were on the train against his orders, none of our jobs are safe. Not your father's or Harold's or mine. Not even Sam's. We also have to hide from Maddie Crocker. She knows us from back in Chicago. You'll still pretend to be the Stoutwood kids. Best to keep it that way until we know what's going on. Do we still have to sleep in the luggage car? I think that would be best. Just until we figure out why your mother is in disguise. I wonder what sort of lunch they serve at the Tipsy Cow. Whatever it might be, my cooking is better. Now, get on out of my kitchen so I have room to work for the lunch rush. Okay. I have to change the sheets on the beds in my sleeper. Would you two go straight to the luggage car? You'll be out of sight and out of mind there as far as the passengers and Will Mallet are concerned. And don't stop to talk to any passengers, okay? What about lunch? Paul, we don't have time right now. 
Your mother is on the night train, though she's supposed to be in Chicago. Your father still doesn't know you're on board. And Sam, well, we promised Sam that you two would be gone once we reached Omaha. I don't know what he'll do when he finds out that you two are still stowing away on the night train. Okay, but what do we do? For now, just get to the luggage car. Keep your heads down and be as quiet as possible. There are four cars you have to get through. Go quickly and wait in the luggage car for me. I'll bring you two some food soon. Promise. But can we at least say hello to Mama? Ada, you cannot go talk to your Mama. Not now. Not in the public dining car. You have to avoid anything that might make the other passengers suspicious. Why would the two Stoutwood kids know the new mysterious woman who boarded the night train in Omaha? We can't just hide on the night train until we get to California. We have to do something. We have to protect the night train from sabotage. The best thing you can do is go to the luggage car. Now. Will might come into the kitchen at any moment. Go. The luggage car is the safest place for you. Come on, Paul. Let's go. Fine. But I'm still going to try and solve the mystery of the sabotage. I wish you didn't have to see all the passengers. But there's no other way to get into the luggage car. Just try not to draw attention to yourselves. Okay. We'll try. Bye, Rosie. See you later. Thanks, Harold. Bye. Edith, you know where to find me if you need me. I'll see you in a couple of hours, and I'll bring a meal with me. Thanks, Harold. And stay hidden. Now go through the cars and do your best not to be noticed. Here we go, Paul. Into the dining car. We just have to get through to the luggage car without anyone recognizing us. Bum, ba, da. Ba, 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 ba. Bum, ba, da. <laughs> Bravo to that! What a marvelous song! Maddie Crocker and Floofy Lady sighted at the left table. Keep your head down, Edith. Maddie might recognize us. My son, Theodore, we call him Teddy, gave me the ticket to ride the night train as a Christmas present. Delightful! I am just amazed at the luck George and I have had. Just in the right station at the right time and a whole compartment opened up. There's Dopey Dad. He's sitting alone in the corner with a book as big as his face. Oh, Mama's sitting with Rudy Ackerman at the booth at the back of the car. Mama! I need to see Mama. I can't hide and stow away anymore, Paul. Harold and Rosie are gonna be real mad if you talk to Mama and we don't stay in the luggage car. I don't care. Don't you miss her? Of course I do. Then please, we need to talk to Mama. But what about her disguise, Edith? What if she doesn't want anyone to know that she's Mama? That she's Mrs. Mallard? There she is. It's definitely Mama. We'll walk right up to her booth and talk loudly. Then, if she can say hi without ruining her disguise, she'll say hi, okay? That way Rosie and Harold can't get mad at us because we didn't talk to her. She talked to us. I don't know, Edith. Come on. Roast saddle of mutton with currant jelly tonight. Here you are, Mrs. Smith. Fantastic. And how long have you been with Pullman, Mr. Ackerman? You seem to have a great affection for the company. Rudy, my dear Miss Diamond, please call me Rudy. Rudy to my friends, and yes, I adore this company. My job as Pullman's advertiser is truly my passion and the culmination of all my skills. Don't this is my first time actually riding on board a night train. <clears throat> Paul, I'm ready for lunch. Where should we sit? I'm not sure, Edith. Do you see an open seat? Ah, hello, children. Are, are you the, the stew towards? Right, uh, Edith and Paul, isn't it? Yes. <gasps> hello. Edith and Paul. Oh, Miss Diamond, have you encountered the Strutward duo yet? I saw them on the platform in Omaha, but we haven't met yet. So you did see us! Don't shout, Paul. I did see you, Paul. My name is Miss Diamond. It's a pleasure to meet you both. Oh, they are a cheery, capable set, always willing to lend the staff a hand. We are pleased as punch to have them meandering about the good old night train. Uh, the little one is handy with a shovel. I am very glad to hear that. They seem lovely. Child labor is very, very lovely. I will stand against those finicky labor unions with every fiber of my being. Terrible people. Terrible. No sense of patriotism. We... 
We must all, all stand up for what we hold dear, mustn't we? Even if it means going places and becoming people we never imagined we might be. Quite so! Uh, that's what I always say. It was good to meet you, Miss Diamond. Thank you for introducing us, Rudy. Keep walking, Paul. She's not going to say anything more to us. Mama is in disguise. I have been working here for nearly 20 years. In fact, my 20-year anniversary with Pullman is on January 5th. Just two days away, I've got a countdown going. Wow, it's as if she didn't even recognize us. She recognized us, Paul. We're the only children on the night train. We're her children. She's ignoring us on purpose. But why? It's clear Mama has a plan. She... She has a plan, Paul. I want to know her plan. I wish she'd explain everything to us. Paul, I... I don't want to go all the way to the luggage cart yet. Please? Let's stay. We can at least sit at this empty booth and listen to Mama talk. Are you sure? Maddie might see us. Yes, Paul. Sit down quickly. No one will notice us. Nevertheless, it must be hard to be away from your family for so long. Family? Ah, yes. Never been able to spend enough time with family. Too consumed with my work. Ah, do you have family, Miss Diamond? Well, why is Mama pretending to be some fancy lady? And why is she talking like Professor Dopey Dad? Lunch is served. What did she mean? What Mama said about standing up for what we hold dear, what did she mean? I've never seen Mama act like this before. She doesn't even like talking to strangers when we're home in Chicago. And now she's chatting with Rudy Ackerman and ignoring us. Who likes talking to Mr. Ackerman? She has a plan. She'll explain. I, I know she will. She's got to. Ah, absolutely scrumptious. This dining car can... Mm. Rival any New York restaurant. I bet Mama came here to spy on the floofy lady. She's here to spy on Kate Smith. Hush, Paul. Mama must have come to find us. She doesn't know that anyone is sabotaging the night train. No one but us and Rosie and Harold know about the tools and the telegram. Everyone else thinks the night train just had a lot of bad luck. Mama came to find you and me because she lost us at the Chicago station almost three days ago. Well, then why didn't she just run up and hug us when she saw us at the station? If she's here to find us, here we are, but she didn't say anything. I don't know, Paul. We'll find out. She knows what she's doing. We just don't know what that is yet. Thank you. Barney, was it? Yes, ma'am. You're very welcome, ma'am. Stop words. I thought you were getting off in Omaha. Uh, we, we decided to stay on the train. Glad to have you. How about some roast mutton and jelly? Oh, lots, please. Paul! Remember what Harold said? We'll eat in the luggage car. No, thank you, Barney. We're not really hungry. Suit yourself. Wait, Barney, isn't mutton lamb? Yes, and Rosie knows how to make it shine. Edith, lamb is the criminal's trademark clue. There was lamb all over the place. First the telegram, then the, well, just the telegram, but still. Barney. Is Kate Smith the only passenger on board who likes lamb's tongue? Thank God, no. Though she is one of the most generous. She gave me a lamb's tongue this morning. She just handed you a slimy lamb's tongue? That's disgusting! No, Paul. Lamb's tongue is railroad slang for a generous tip. It's not a piece of meat. It's a couple of dollars. Oh. So if you do a good job serving a passenger, they'll give you a lamb's tongue. Paul, shush. That's wonderful, Barney. Thank you. My pleasure, Edith. The telegram. The telegram, Edith. It said, if through the snow cuts the struts and sways for a lamb's tongue. It was all in code. Lamb's tongue was code. If through the snow cuts struts and sways for a lamb's tongue. If the night train keeps going after the avalanche, that's the snow part. Sabotage the struts and sways of the Union Pacific Bridge. That's the cut struts and sways part. For a generous tip. A big reward. That's the lamb's tongue part. Snake's alive. It is a code. Railroad code. The telegram wasn't actually about lamb as in sheep. It was about money. The telegram meant they'd pay people to sabotage the night train. So whoever wrote this telegram knew railroad slang. So they have to know a lot about the railroad. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're a good detective, Edith. I think the railroad code is evidence that Professor Dopey Dad is guilty. Dopey Dad? It can't be Dopey Dad, Edith. He hasn't done anything equivocating. Yes, he has. Don't you remember his telegram? And it's incriminating, not equivocating. 
Remember the telegram he sent in Omaha? The one about a, a plot? Yes. He said, be patient. Have faith in my plot. That's equivocating. I mean, incriminating. Pardon me, Rudy, but would you introduce me to our delightful new passenger? Shh! There's Dopey Dad right now, next to Mama's booth. Dopey Dad! Uh, come and sit by me, old man. The roast mutton is delicious. Good evening, Mr. Dopey Dad, was it? Uh, Mary, this is Professor Dopey Dad, our tenured professor and railroad historian, quite a renowned figure of academia. Professor, meet Miss Mary Diamond. A pleasure to meet you, Professor Dopey Dad. An honor, I'm sure. Your patience will be rewarded. Have faith in my plot. His telegram sounded weird, but it didn't say anything about lamb. Plot, Paul. He said plot. Dopey Dad is always asking Rudy and Sam questions about the railroad, reading about it and researching everything about trains. If anyone knows what lamb's tongue means, it's him. He's just trying to write a book, Edith, for history or something. He could be in disguise, like Mama. But why? Perhaps he secretly works for the Wagner train company, like a spy, an informant. Whoever is trying to stop the night train is trying to make sure the Midnight Express train wins. They want Wagner to beat Pullman. But Doby Dad has nothing to do with the Wagner company. He's just a teacher. I bet you Kate Smith. Kate Smith isn't in cahoots with Wagner, Paul. Professor Doby Dad could be. You don't know that. Give me time. We'll find some more clues. Maybe Doby Dad is Mr. Webster Wagner himself. Is that Louise Mallard? Is that you? Uh, excuse me? Do I? Should I know you? Paul, that's Mrs. Maddie Crocker. Mrs. Crocker recognized Mama. Her disguise didn't work. Now she will ruin her plan. Whatever it is. Yes, Maddie. Maddie Crocker. Why, of course you know me. What, what do you mean, should I know you? Madeline Crocker. No, I'm sorry. That doesn't ring any bells, I'm afraid. I'm trying to make your acquaintance, though. Oh, oh dear me. I'm so sorry. You look strikingly similar to a lady I know from Chicago. Are you perhaps related to a Mrs. Louise Mallard? Mallard? As in William Mallard? The manager of the night train. My name is Mary Diamond. I just boarded the train in Omaha. Oh, then you couldn't be related to Louise. She was born and raised in Virginia. I'm so sorry for the mix-up. I'm Maddie Crocker. <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm sorry, I really must go. My husband George is waiting for me to come back to the lounge car for a game of checkers. Bye! Wow. I'm glad she didn't notice us, too. She'd have definitely known Mama was Louise Shush, Mallard. Shush, Paul. I'm just saying that Maddie would definitely know who Mama is if she saw us next to her. Then all our disguises would be ruined. Well, Miss Diamond, it has been a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Professor Dopey Dad, the pleasure is all mine. <clears throat> well, where are you off to in such a hurry, man? The mutton is incredible. I have an important meeting for my research with the conductor, Sam Lewis. Did you hear that, Paul? Research or sabotage research? You might be right, Edith. Maybe Dopey Dad did sabotage the train. Ah, yes, yes. That's an important book you're working on, Dopey Dad. Yes, a history of the American Railroad. It occupies my every waking moment. What a glorious, if accident-prone adventure. It's sure to make for a bestseller. Cheers to that. I'll see you at dinner. Goodbye, Professor. I'm telling you, Paul, Dopey Dad could be the one sabotaging the train. I'll bet he's planning the next accident now. Maybe he does know a lot about railroads. Let's follow him. We can't stay in the dining car anyways. Rosie and Harold told us not to. Good idea. Maybe we can find evidence that Dopey Dad is guilty. Exactly. At least it's worth a try. Come on, let's go. Oh, Snake's alive! Maddie Crocker's here in the lounge car playing checkers with her husband. We can't go in if she's there. Maybe she won't notice us if we walk very quietly. She's looking at the checkers board. Now, Edith, quick, to the back of the lounge car. Don't be dad just went to Sam's office, Edith. We have to hide before Mrs. Crocker sees us. Come here, Edith, behind that couch, here at the back of the car. We'll be out of Mrs. Crocker's sight and close enough to maybe hear Dopey Dad in Sam's office. Okay. But this could be dangerous, Paul. 
We're detective stowaways now, Edith. We have to do it. It's kind of dusty back here. <clears throat> Don't start sneezing, Edith. Okay, this is good. Mrs. Crocker can't see us while she's playing checkers, and Dopey Dad is inside Sam's office, so we won't get caught. I don't think Harold will mind if we did some detective work, so long as we keep out of sight. Shh! Paul, put your ear against the wall and listen. Uh, Mr. Lewis, is now a convenient time for our little conference? Your insights are invaluable to me and my work. He must be talking about the plot he mentioned in his telegram. Certainly, Professor Dopey Dad. Thank you so much for taking this interview. You know I'm working on the historical account of the night train's successful journey to California. And if this train makes it to Sacramento unimpaired, I expect this book will catapult my notoriety in academia to an unforeseen height. <laughs> uh, anyway, you have a wealth of railroad experience that it would be my privilege to mine. I'd like to know a little bit about your personal experience, Mr. Lewis, and then hear about where the night train is headed. I have a list of questions for you, if you don't mind. Yes, Professor. What would you say is your most dependable guide in learning about the railroad? Railroad men are the best guides. They've lived on these rails. And McNally's official railway guide and handbook. All useful sources of information. I hope Sam is careful. He knows all the timetables. He has a lot of information that could help Dobie Dad if he's trying to stop the night train. Wonderful, wonderful. Mm-hmm. And how many years have you worked for Pullman? I've worked as a conductor for 12 years. This is my first year with Pullman. Hmm. And what prompted you to join the Pullman line? The Pullman promise of safety, reliability, and luxury. It is a truly excellent company. Maybe we should have told Sam about the sabotage, so he is on guard and doesn't give important information away to Dopey Dad. It's too late now, Edith. Dopey Dad's already got him cornered. Give me an update on the Wagner-Pullman race from your perspective. Our next stop is Cheyenne, Wyoming. And Cheyenne is roughly 100 miles north of where Wagner's Midnight Express will stop in Denver, Colorado, correct? Yes. Cheyenne and Denver are the next checkpoints for the two trains. Wagner's Midnight Express was ahead at the first stop. For us, we traveled 466 miles from Chicago to Omaha, Nebraska, our first checkpoint. Wagner managed to gain the lead, though they traveled a greater distance from Chicago, precisely 513 miles, to Kansas City, their first checkpoint. Unfortunately, the night train would still be in the lead if not for the boiler explosion, avalanche, and the Union Pacific Bridge damage. An unlucky chain of events. Yes, unlucky as you say. And how much of the race is still to be run? The night train has approximately 1,600 miles of track to cover from here to Sacramento, California. And when should we arrive at our next stops, if everything goes according to plan? He's asking about the timetables, just like I knew he would. He wants to figure out how to sabotage the night train. What do we do? How can we stop him? We could toss him off the back of the train. Paul, I'm serious. If we stay on schedule, the night train is slated to arrive in Cheyenne a little after midnight tonight. It will be a brief stop in Cheyenne. We'll pick up coal and send telegrams updating the upcoming stations on our progress. As a passenger, you won't be able to do any sightseeing, but you will have time to get the latest newspapers and any telegrams from Chicago addressed to the night train. Those will have been forwarded to the Cheyenne station for you. Excellent. I'm feeling a bit peaked. I think I'll go lie down in our roomette. All right, Maddie. I'll stay here and work for a little Mrs. while. Mrs. Crocker is going to be walking past our couch to get to her sleeper. She could see us. Oh, George, all you do is work. Can't you rest just for the Christmas season? Not if you want to be a socialite, Maddie. Fame costs money, my dear, and to my knowledge, you are still blissfully unemployed. I need to check on my work. Fine, we can't let her see us, Paul. See you get up, get through the hallway and into the sleeper. I'm coming. <laughs> Edith, don't stop short like that. Keep moving. I can hear her coming up behind us. Dad, Dad's here in the sleeper car. Tours by the Union Pacific Bridge. Oh, no. Yes, sir. Edith, stop bumping into me. We can't go back into the lounge car. Mrs. Crocker is there. What do we do? Either Dad turns around and sees us, or Mrs. Crocker comes to the door and we're discovered. We're trapped. There's got to be a way out of this. How did you find this? You were with me by the bridge the whole time. A friend of the night train brought it to my attention, sir. Someone is trying to harm the night train. 
Please be on your guard. I can hear Mrs. Crocker coming! We have to hide! Just make sure to relax a little bit, George. I'll be back in a few. The roomettes! Here! This one! This door's open! Follow me! But Paul! Paul, we can't go inside someone's bedroom! No choice! Come on, Edith! My stars! Is that Will Mallard I spy? I don't want to hide anymore, Paul. I can't hear Dad. You know, it's the funniest thing. I saw a woman who looks just like your wife Louise in the dining car just now. That can't be right. It wasn't. She was a totally different person. A Miss Topaz or Sapphire or something like that. Ah. Oh. What a pity it is that Louise couldn't tag along. You must miss her dreadfully. I miss her very much. I must leave you to your work now. I'm off to get my beauty sleep. Not that I need much of it. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Crocker. She's gone. We just have to stay here until Dad leaves. I hate hiding from Daddy. We're the Mallards all together again on the night train. But Mama and Dad might as well be hundreds of miles away. I know. I feel the same way, Edith. Will, the tools weren't the only thing discovered at the Union Pacific Bridge. What else? A telegram. It was sent from Chicago to Omaha, and it said, if through the snow, cut struts and sways for a lamb's tongue. I see. Will, I don't think this train is safe. Someone is out to get us. Stop us. You think that someone, quite possibly a railroad man in Webster Wagner's pay, is trying to sabotage the night train? Yes. But the railroad is dangerous, Harold. Accidents happen all the time, you know that. We don't need to start throwing accusations about. Will, an explosion, and an avalanche, and an intentionally damaged bridge, all in quick succession? I don't think they're accidents. I know, it is out of the ordinary. I'll keep my guard up, but this trip is hard enough as it is. If the passengers grow frightened, it will be impossible. We just need to keep the train moving. There is still a lot of track yet to be covered. I, I understand. Sir. We'll keep an eye out. If there is sabotage ahead, we'll deal with it when it happens, okay? Yes, sir. I I'd best be going down to the dining car now. And I to the engine. I'll see you later. Tell me if you hear anything else. I will. I'm not trying to be stubborn about this, Harold. It's just that I... I know, sir. I know. Thank you. Daddy's gone. We're in the clear. I'm glad that Harold warned Dad. Me too. But whose room are we in? Well, apparently someone who likes to write. There are papers and ink all over the place. Every single part of the wall is covered with advertisement ideas. Paul, I think we're in Rudy Ackerman's room. That's good. He'll probably stay in the dining car for hours chatting with Mama. I wish there was nothing to warn Daddy about. Sabotage after sabotage. It's too much. I want to be the Mallard kids again, not the stout words. I can't believe we're hiding in Rudy Ackerman's bedroom, hiding from Dad. And Mama is pretending to be some fancy lady, and I don't know why. I just want to go home. I wish we could have just gone home from Omaha. I wish we could be with Mama. I hate secrets, Paul. I just want to be Edith Mallard again. Listen to me. Mary Edith Bridget. It doesn't matter what name you call yourself. Southward or Mallard, Mama and Dad are still your family. I'm still your brother, like it or not. There are lots of secrets in this world, and we've just become part of one of them. That's all. Okay. I just wish it would end. It will. But right now, we need to focus. If we can keep our identity a secret, we can help Dad and save the night train. Okay. We can do that. Now, come on. Let's get out of Rudy's bedroom and go to the luggage car. Yes, please. Rudy's room smells like peppermints, and it's giving me a headache. Coast is clear. Take my hand. Out we go. Come on. Let's get through the sleeper cars quickly. I don't want Harold to find us in the corridor. Shh. Do you hear Kate? Her room must be in the second sleeper car. The lamb is all taken care of. Now for my correspondence. So much to tell Muriel. Hmm. Ooh, I suppose I'll begin by explaining all the accidents. She must be all in a dither to hear if I'm all right after the explosion and the avalanche and the nearly collapsed bridge. Oh, though I guess she doesn't know about that quite yet. Hmm, well, she will soon. News travels fast once the train stops at the station. Dear Muriel. Come on, 
across the connection and into the luggage car. I hate going across the connection. It's really not a big deal. Come on. Just keep moving your feet. Not a big deal. It's terrifying. Keep moving, Edith. It's not so bad. The train is whipping across Nebraska, and the ground looks like a blur, and the wind is going to blow us away. Aren't you scared, Paul? Nope, just keep walking, Edith. There we go, safe and sound, back in the luggage car. It's like we're starting all over again. Mom is on the train too now, that's different. She tried to give us a clue, back in the dining car. I think she tried to give us a clue about her plan and her disguise. When she was talking to Rudy. Yes, she said, we must all stand up for what we hold dear. I remember, and then she looked straight at us and said, even if it means going places and becoming people we never imagined we might be. I think she was talking about pretending to be someone else. Maybe that's why she wouldn't say hi to us. If Mom is going to stay in disguise, she can't let everyone on board find out that she's our mother. If she did that, Mrs. Crocker would recognize us as the Mallards, all three of us. And Dad would lose his job, and we'd all be sent off the night train. You say Mama has a plan, so we just have to wait and see what Mama's plan is. Paul, I think Mama is here to help save Dad and the night train, and that she knows that someone is trying to sabotage the train. How could she? She hasn't been on board with us. She doesn't know about the telegram or the tools we found by the bridge. Why is she here then? Why didn't she just find us and take us home? I don't know. Hey, look, Edith. This carpet bag wasn't here before. Do you think Mama brought it? It's not Mama's bag, Paul. Her carpet bag has emerald green flowers, and that one's just an ugly beige all over. Whose is it then? Harold must have moved the luggage around. We probably just couldn't see it before. Edith, I've looked all around this luggage car. We've been living here for days. This bag is new. It's got a lock on the clasp, so you can't open it. Why would somebody go through the trouble of locking up a carpet bag? It's probably just clothes and books. Or dynamite. Dynamite? Someone could be trying to sabotage the train by blowing it up. Or maybe there are more tools in here, so they can sabotage one of the train cars. We need to fully investigate this. Paul, shouldn't we ask Harold first before we start looking through other people's belongings? Edith, Edith, I found another telegram in the pocket of the carpet bag. What? What does it say? Whatever it takes, stop them before the end of the rails. You've been listening to On the Night Train, the race across America, an original audio adventure from the Merry Beggars. If you're enjoying On the Night Train, share the story with a friend or family member now and bring them on board the night train. You can send them to onthenighttrain.com slash subscribe. Leave a rating and a review so the adventure can be found by families all across America. Come back next Sunday at 6 p.m. Central to hear Episode 10 of On the Night Train. Listen live on the relevant radio network, coast to coast, at onthenighttrain.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Leave a rating and review to help others discover and enjoy On the Night Train. To catch up on episodes you've missed, to meet the night train passengers, and to explore the train cars, go to onthenighttrain.com. On the Night Train was written by Kylie Hatch, directed by Peter Atkinson, casting by Michaela Elise Fox, Script development by Buzz McLaughlin. Sound design by Kevin Conroy. Sound recording by Teresa Pascal. Edith was performed by Liliana Renee Renteria. Paul was Noah Bush. Harold Milton was Kellyon Maston. Sam Lewis was Brian Middlestad. Will Mallard was Gabriel Fries. Luis Mallard was Lydia Hanman. Rosie Johnson was Lakesia Harris. Kate Smith was Susie Kruckerberg. Professor Dopey Dad was Andrew Pond. Rudy Ackerman was Michael Wolner. Maddie Crocker was Anna Silva. George Crocker was Andrew Kerr. Barney was Derek Demkowitz. And Philip was performed by Chris Miller. The Merry Beggars is the entertainment division of Relevant Radio, bringing Christ to the world through the media.